there's that little word preview, so if you run into quirks, don't be surprised. Oh, and yeah, it's open source. See the, get the source code stuff? We take a look at where it's actually posted, and it's on the phone flies. And when you do this download, it will download everything, including the sample that they have on their site. So if you want to play with the samples locally, you can do that as well. That is TypeScript. <coughs> they also have Hello World and Encyclopedia app and a few other apps on their site that you can play with. Now, Test 262. How many of you guys have heard of Test 262? Okay. So, doing web development, you guys know the pains of having to develop for multiple browsers. It, it can be painful trying to get them in line. Um, so, Test 262, that's their website, test262.ecmascript.org. It checks between JavaScript implementations and the, X, the ECMA 262 standard. These are running tests against the browser to see, okay, what's it doing properly. Um, it's over thousands of tests, and I'll show you the screenshots because I ran it for each of the five browsers that I have on here. Um, and it's maintained by ECMA TC39, that's their team. And it's currently under development, so they're adding more tests. But it's nice to see just what browser support what in terms of JavaScript and the ECMA 262 standard. So this is uh, IE 10 desktop mode. I ran it last night. I tried to run these tests as close to the presentation just in case something changed. Um, and as you'll notice with um, IE 10, it's 11,573 total tests, only seven failed. So IE 10 is doing something right finally in terms of JavaScript and ECMA 262 compatibility. Now, some of the other browsers we're not so lucky with. <laughs> We've got Safari for Windows. Uh, 614 failed. This is probably the worst of the browsers, unfortunately. I say unfortunately because I used to like this browser a lot. And then I saw these results and said, Google Chrome, only 15 failed. Opera for Windows, only 11 failed. 11, 15 out of 11,000, they're doing something right. And then Firefox, 193 failed. So Firefox and Safari have some catching up to do. Surprisingly, IE10 is toward the top of the list. So if you ever find yourself questioning whether a browser is going to work well with JavaScript, run this test 262. I'm just going to show you the website over here. how simple it is to run. If you happen to have any other browser, feel free to test it as well. I have not downloaded NCSA Mosaic. For those of you guys who know my troublemaking ways, um, I'm always curious with that. But I did not do that. So you just come to this run. Now you can see what they're doing in terms of text. Um, unfortunately, they label like chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8. If I could say, okay, just run this one test. Test complete. And then I can say, okay, look at the results. The test for handling the supplement through characters, it passed. We can look at the source or the test case. So you can actually take a look and see what they're testing and how that test is built. If you like to run, you can do the run all, you can choose various things. And then you test file. So, yeah, and 11,000 tests. And it's still being developed. So expect to see more tests around <coughs> JavaScript as they create them. So now we're going to talk about the all-in-one code framework. Have any of you guys heard about this? You have. OK. When I saw this, oh. I just I was so excited to finally see this kind of resource available for us as developers. It's been out for a while, mm -hmm. but with the new Windows 8 app and stuff. And yeah. It just so it's available. You can do it on the Windows 7 side of things. You can do it for Windows 8. Um, my presentation <coughs> here has the screenshots for both the 7 experience and the 8 experience. 
Um, I took screenshots just because we didn't know what the Wi-Fi situation was going to be like here. So I'm actually going to bypass a lot of the screenshots and just do a live demo of it. Um, in terms of, like, on the IT scripting side, I'm still used to Microsoft Script Explorer and checking out the, what the community is doing for, like, PowerShell scripts. But on the development side, I have to go to the MSDN, and it was a pain in the butt. I didn't want to have to keep opening up a browser and searching and searching. I want one app right at my fingertips that I can actually use and work well with. All in one code framework does that. It's an open source project. It's available on CodePlex. Um, it's a searchable community contributed code repository. Don't try to say that three times fast. So when they say all in one, they're shooting for all the Microsoft development technologies. And we'll take a look to see just what all that encompasses. Um, the languages that are supported include C++, C Sharp, VB.net. So languages that we're familiar with. Um, localized samples for non-English countries. So if you're working in a non-English environment, you also have that. The technologies that are included continue throughout this list. I actually wrote blog posts because, while I was in uh, Washington because I just found this to be such a cool tool. So complete with the screenshots that are here in the slide deck, so feel free to take a look at these links. So let's take a look at the all-in-one code framework demo. Now I'm actually going to start with the Windows 8 app first. So if we come on here, I do a search for sample browser. <coughs> Sample Browser is the app that's on the Windows Store for Windows 8. So you can see this is the MSDN samples gallery that it's tied to. Um, and what's nice, it says here over 4,500 samples. You never know what's going to be out there. Uh, and they break it down nicely. You've got some Windows samples, including <coughs> Office and Visual Studio Accessibility and Windows drivers. So things that you may not deal with every day, but need that reference. We've got web samples including SharePoint and HTML5. We've got cloud. We've got phone. And these are just some of the things. I know that SQL Server is in there as well. Not on there. Um, these customer driven samples were created by the all-in-one code framework team. So let's take a look at what happens when I click this. So notice right away it's loading the results, and we're like, okay, well, what is it doing? And it's showing all the feature samples from the all in code framework. But I could say, okay, let's say I want to look at this ASP.NET Ajax web chat application. When I click on that, what this does is it gives me a, a basic, this is what this project does. That's what this is doing over here. I can say, okay, let's browse the document for it. That's what this is. Let's browse the C Sharp for it. Oh, look, now we actually have a code file browser. This is in the Windows 8 app. This is not on the Windows 7 app. But I can say, okay, let's say I want to see what, I don't know. You'll see that the default page load is setting the host address. But notice that the navigation, you can take a look, there's syntax highlighting. I could say, okay, you know what, maybe I want to work with this code. Right click and copy, and then I can go back into Visual Studio and paste it. So it's nice that I can look at code and say, oh, you know what, this would be nice to have. Copy it and use it from there. Notice over here on the left hand side are various uh, technologies that we can do. We can take Ledger. 22 samples. Uh, we can say, okay, let's clear our filters. And go back. And let's take a look and see if I favored it. Oh, I did actually favor this AP.net Ajax web chat application. And the other way you can see that is over here on the left. You can also see that I've done some search history here in the past. So let's see what happens if I did a search for PowerShell Windows for me. I already know that there are no samples. Um, and that the whole reason why I want to show this is when there isn't a sample, they actually say that you can submit a sample request and then they'll do what they can to get the sample there. So 
if we do, if I click submit my sample, you'll notice it'll take us over to how to do it. Now the user experience on the Windows 8 side for requesting samples is taking me to the blog post. I was not keen on that. Go back to the sample And I'll show you the Windows 7 side as well to show you why I like that one a little bit better. So I mean you can do safe searches. You can say, okay. I want to do a search for, you know, I'm doing Windows Phone 8 development. Come here. And look, this one actually has code, so now I can say, download it. And it'll download it. So now I can browse it. So if there's code that's downloadable, it'll give you that download button as well. And that's just based on how that project is configured. And that's just a symbol of the Windows 8 app. There's no mobile app for it. Let's take a look at the Windows 7 app, which I actually prefer. So if I do a search for a all in one code framework, I'm actually going to start at the home page. You'll notice by this little bar over here on the upper left, that it probably was written with the same tools that the Zoom software was written in. Um, it's got that. If we take a look at the settings, again, that looks a lot like what the Zoom software UI is like. So it's a familiar UI if you're on the Microsoft platform and uh, streaming music. If I could say, okay, we want to show three safe searches. Um, if I have any proxy stuff, if I'm downloading code, I need to tell where I'm downloading it to. And then, in terms of languages, these are the various languages that it supports. Um, uh, so yeah, if you are working in one of the Asian fonts, for example, or uh, languages, you've got those. Spanish, Dutch, Italian, French. It looks like some Cyrillic of some sort. So I can say save. They have some social integration, share on Twitter, share on Delicious. Uh, taking Facebook. Again, if I do the same thing where I click on the all-in-one code framework, this is why I like this a little bit better, is that I've got all of my filtering right here at my fingertips, easy to find. So I can say, okay, by clicking that, that told me it wants to find everything for all-in-one code framework as the author. That's fine. But let's say I want to find, I'm going to take this one off, <coughs> all authors. Let's say I want to find map examples. And actually, I already have that search, so I'm going to bring that here. Did a search for map with the ASP.NET technology, C Sharp language, Visual Studio 2012. When I click on that, notice it set my filters for me. So now it's getting all the results, 20 examples. If I want all these samples, I can say, you know what, let's download all of them. Um, but let's say you want to download maybe a handful of them, like maybe I really need to know this Ajax. No, instead of that, Ajax, you need to know. Um, and maybe I want this guy, so I'm just control clicking on these guys. And then if I right click, I'm going to do download. Come over to downloading. Uh, Oh, I didn't grab the other guy, did I not select it? I'm going to re-click on the downloading so that it'll flip me back to my search result. Either that or that was a really quick. Cool. Okay, that guy, that guy, that guy. I'll grab a launch. Just so I actually have a list. And download. Notice it says pending. If I go to downloading, now you can see that there are are things in the queue and an error in the path. Good job. <laughs> they can't always control what the community contributes, so you're going to run into errors, unfortunately. Apparently, I don't need to know Ajax on that. But that was how simple it's just control click for if you see multiple examples. Of Again, that was as simple as I could have come under here and say, okay, I'm in the studio 2012. Maybe I'm working in a shop that has 2010, or maybe I just want to include both 2010 and 2012. So it's 
you can limit that. You can say, okay, certain authors, certain affiliations. So maybe you want only community contributed stuff. Uh, languages, take a look and see. We've got even F sharp and JavaScript, SQL, DB. A lot of technology in this technology list. And when we get into things like there's a history framework, there's SharePoint and SharePoint 2010. I'm not too sure why they break them. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a particular version that the plain old SharePoint is and why 2010 wouldn't be considered that. I don't know why they would break it up like that, but it's yeah. there. Um, Windows Phone, Windows 7, Windows 8. <coughs> I mean, anything that you're developing for, there's probably a sample that could help you. Um, even XNA, which XNA, the support isn't there as much anymore. So if you do find yourself starting with XNA and can't find anything online, use this to help find it. So downloading is nice. Expanding the collapse. There's featured samples. So if you want to see particular samples, say you're in a place where you need to, an office admin, for example, you could come into office samples and that'll help you with working with that. These again are the featured samples. Um, there are some searches that I favorited too. So in a uh, past position, I was dealing with uh, finding locations to a particular type of uh, business. And so I always wanted to find, how do I embed, be it Google Maps or work with another map API? Um, and so I figured, okay, we'll save the uh, map in the ASP.NET C Sharp Visual Studio 2012. Well, nowadays we're also working with HTML5. So I also have that as a favorite search. When you do a search of any type, you can use, there's this little heart button underneath the search. So you can add that current uh, query to the favorite searches, and then it'll appear down here. Maybe I'm going to do a search for instead of maps, maybe I'm doing graphs. Because I have dealt with a lot of accounting departments, and you know how accounting departments like the graphs and the charts. So I could do that and say, okay, you know what, let's favor this. And notice that graph in HTML5 now appeared down here. Again, the search history. If you're like me and you do a lot of searches, sometimes you may want to bump that number up. And you could say, you know what, I only want to see the newest samples. Apparently nothing is considered their newest. Um, that might be a bug on their part, because something's got to be the newest of this list, I would hope. And of course, as you favorite various pieces of code, you can just come under favorites to see it. Now let's say that you do run into something that isn't supported. So I want to reset all my search conditions. And I want to find something for PowerShell and Windows Phone 8 because we know there's nothing there. Because it's a totally absurd combination. That's why I did that. So what happens when I say let's request the code sample? Notice it came over to the sample request services. And this gives you the step-by-step -step proper way of doing this. This isn't taking you to a blog post on how to do it. So it actually tells you more details as to how you can request code samples. And that's the all in one uh, code framework. And there's sample browsers. Yeah, there's also Visual Studio uh, integration. So if we bring up Visual Studio 2012 up here, this search code samples. So I can say I want to search for JSON. I click my drop down. Oh, it's got to search for key to come out. Always in the When I do that, it opens. And it's searching. Not responding. Awesome. I'll give it a minute. Because it could be just timing up on the internet connection. So what it's supposed to be doing, it's supposed to be running a search for JSON and bringing back the code samples. That'll also give you an interface to make it easy to copy from the sample and bring it into Visual Studio. But apparently it's wanting to do the circle dance of that. So, we're just going to close the program. That's fine. Go and check for our solution. My solution is just close it. Um, and then, of course, we've got the screenshots to walk through. Um, when you're searching on the Windows Store, this is the app you're looking for, the Sample Browser. I took a screenshot just because with the name Sample Browser, it seems pretty generic. It is what it is. And more screenshots. Okay. 
Moving on, let's take a look at Internet Explorer and some tools that are making it 